Hi there. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up Element VST Loader with MIDI in the context of using NAMP. We're going to look at how to set it up. Then we'll look at a couple of different real use case scenarios where this may be useful. If you haven't watched my previous video on Element and NAMP, we went over how to set it up and create a very simple chain using an overdrive, NAMP, and Valhalla for effects. We're going to start where we left off in that video. If you haven't watched it and you need to get up and running with Element and NAMP, then I suggest you go watch it and then come back. Let's get started. We first have to set up your MIDI controller with Element. For this demonstration, I will be using my Akai MPK Mini MIDI controller. It connects to my computer via USB, so it's very simple. Some MIDI controllers will require a MIDI adapter, or you can use your interface MIDI input port to connect it that way. Your MIDI controller may require drivers, but I found out that most of them are plug and play. You can quickly check by right clicking on the empty space and go to MIDI input device and just making sure yours is listed here. Now that we know the MIDI controller is being recognized in Windows and Element, we have to go to File, go to Preferences, go to MIDI. Under MIDI, you don't have to worry about the MIDI output device since we're, we're not going to be sending MIDI out to your MIDI controller. We just need to worry about active MIDI inputs and make sure yours is on. Now we need to set up the controller device. We're going to close this windows. We're going to go to View, Controllers. Now on the top right, you see this plus sign, add new controller device. We're going to add that. We're going to call it, make, give it a name, PK mini for me. And then we're going to choose the correct input device. Now we need to tell element which MIDI message is being sent by all these pads and knobs. All MIDI controllers are different and all these can be customized. My MIDI controller comes with this software where I can customize which CC message is being sent by each pad and each knob. So this pad five is sends CC five, this one sends six, this one is seven and so forth. Just be aware that you can set them up. It's not that important because we're gonna learn these from Element. So I'll show you how to do that. Let's set up the pads first. We'll do the top row only, and then we'll do the top row of the knobs. We first have to go into learn mode. We do that by clicking this button down here. Now we're in learn mode, it turns green. This part is a sequence. We do the plus sign to add a new control. And then right after we hit the first pad to set up the first pad. Once we do that, my MIDI controller does not send a CC message for the pad by default. So I wanted to show you that first. See, it says control one, and then it sends a C note as opposed to a CC message. So I have to make a change in my controller to be able to send CC messages from these pads. And all it is in my controller is this button right here. And now these pads will send CC messages and not notes like the keyboard, the keyboard part. So let's do that again. I'm going to delete it. The, the first control down here by clicking the remove the minus sign to remove it. And then we're going to hit, we're going to hit the plus sign again, first pad. And now we're getting CC 50, which is a CC message. It's what we need. And then let's just go and create the rest of the pads and then we'll continue to the knobs. So plus sign, second pad, plus sign, third pad, plus sign, fourth pad, plus sign, move the first knob, plus sign, second knob, plus sign, third knob, and the last one. Now your controls in your MIDI controller are set up with element. And don't forget to save it.
now that your MIDI controls are set up with Element, let's make that useful. Let's set up the first pad to turn on and off your overdrive. Seems like a very common scenario, right? So we go back to the view to get back to the graph editor. We open the plugin. You don't have to go back to the controller view, but I'm going to so I can show you what's going on behind the scenes. We then go into mapping mode, top right, it turns blue. And then this is a sequence, very, very simple. All you have to do is click the plugin, the button that you want to map, and then you're going to click the corresponding pad. So we first click on the plugin, and then we click the pad to map it. Now it made that control, that, that link between the pad and the button and the plugin. So let's test it. You can see, answer, turns it on and off. Cool, right? So let's look at NAMM. So there are certain things you can map and not map with NAMM. For example, the things that you can map are all the knobs and the IR bypass switch. Everything else you cannot. I hope that in the near future, they can add MIDI capabilities to switch for these arrows to switch amps, because then you can set up a folder with maybe a clean amp and a dirt amp, and then be able to use MIDI to switch between both of them very easily. But that's not available yet. Let's map the input knob to knob number two here, my controller, and maybe let's do the, the output. Seems like a good one. Let's do it on the last one. So we're going to, we're going to do gate on the second one, and then we're going to do output on the last one. So we click on map, we move the knob, the input knob first, we're going to do the second one. So we move it here the control now they're mapped together and then let's go map again let's move the output knob and then now move this one on my controller dog is being loud so i'm gonna start over the recording <laughs> and then see that works let's say we want to control two parameters from two different plugins with one pad common use would be you have your rhythm sound and you want to, you go into your lead, you want to turn on your overdrive and your delay at the same time. So you get that boost and the effects at the same time with one button. So let's do that. Let's set that up with the last one right here with the last pad, pad number four, control number four. So it works just like you think it would. Uh, you would go to the overdrive first, open both. And this would be a good example because Valhalla doesn't have a built-in uh, button. So we're going to use the plugin button up here in the top right, top left. You can also use it on TSC, but it has a built-in button right here. So first, let's go to map. We're going to click on the first button for the overdrive. Now that's hooked up. And then we're going to do the same thing for the for Bahala. Map. We're now going to click this on off switch in the top left. Then, so now, so you can see they're both turning on and off at the same time. So that's pretty cool. We'll still have the first one to be just your overdrive. It doesn't affect the, the delay reverb, but then when you go to this one, it does both. It's pretty cool, right? Let's see how that sounds. Well, that's it. I hope this video was useful in helping you set up MIDI with Element and NAMM and some other plugins. This can be a very useful tool in the studio or when you're playing live to be able to get your hands off the mouse and focus more on your performance. If you guys haven't subscribed yet and you like this kind of content, please subscribe and 
I hope you guys have a wonderful day.